103B. Kuskimel, Ahmed Bey, it's towards the bottom. Um, it's about 12 lines up. Amr Abi Huda. And today's daf is Kuftalat. Okay, let's begin. Amr Abi Huda, Matinu Shem Katan Mishim Gadl Rabi Huda says that someone could be intending to write a, uh, a full name. He starts off, he's going to write Shimon. He ends up just writing shame, and that's already, uh, uh, it's going to be chayev just because of that. Like the first two letters of a name, which is also a word. Umar says, me dummy. Is it similar? The word shame and the word shimin. Mem the shame sasam. If he's writing shame, he has a final mem, which is a square. Mem the the shimon pesuach, but if the mem is in the middle of the word, then it's an open mem. Open mem is like on Dr. Stein's uh, background. You see the mem is open on the bottom, but a final mem is a closed box. So if he's writing shame, then he has to make a final mem. If he's writing shimon, then he has to write an open mem. So what are you saying? If he stopped in the middle of the word, he's going to be chayev. There's a different letter. Because the mem depends if it's the beginning of the word or the end of the word. Yeah, middle of the word or end of the word. The way you write it. It's a big problem. You know what this means? That if you don't make a final mem, you make a regular mem, it still works. Yeah, there are these people, you know, they're, they're spelling. I mean, you have to get used to their, their spelling and their letters and this and that. But once they get used to it, you could read what they're writing. Here we're saying that if people don't make um, final mems, you know, it gets a little difficult because you don't know where the end of the word is. But uh, if you get used to it, you can figure it out. And this is a kosher way of writing. So he's writing shame, but he uses a mem that's not, uh, that's not an end of the word mem. Yeah, I don't think we have an example of this in, in English. I don't know, I don't know if there's any co uh, corresponding difficulty. Okay. We have in English apostrophes that can throw you off what exactly you meant to say. Um, commas that can throw you off also. But anyway, here it's just, is it the end of the word or the middle of the word? Yeah, like in Dr. Stein's background, there's a, now it says Shin Mem. It looks like you're about to finish the word. It doesn't look like a total word because the Mem is, uh, is for, the middle of, for, the, uh, for the middle of the word. Anyway, from this, we see that it's kosher. Mesvi, the Gemara has a question on this. That's really kosher. It says in the Torah that you should write them, I'm talking about the Tefillin and the Mezuzah, I'm talking about the Mezuzah, but it's referring to the Tefillin as well. At least in the in this context, should take sivatama shleichtev alfin einin einin alfin. Uchsav tam is you divide up that word. Ksav tam, tam means perfect. You have to have perfect writing. Umar learns from this. You can't have a hole in a letter. Ksivatama. Um, it has to be perfect. An example is that your alephs can't be ions. Now, Rashi says this is referring to people mix up Aleph and Ayans because they sound similar. However, other commentaries say that if you think about the Aleph, you know, there's a line going down with the uh, Yud or on top. If you, drop one of the, if you drop one of the legs and you flip it the other way, so it looks like an Ayan. It looks like an Ayan. Okay. Basin, coffin, coffin, basin, that's an easy mistake. A base has a little back on it. You can't make your base like a cuff. Has a little back, and also there's also a difference. The base on the top is a, is a square. That's a, that's a key point over there. Um, gimel tzadin tzadin gimel. The difference. Be you have a question? I do. Thank you. Uh, I'm a little confused about how we got from the two OCOs, which are discussed in the original Mishnah back on I and Gimel. Yeah. To talking about words. Yeah. 
I, I must have missed it. I, I'm uh, sorry. According to this opinion, um, there was an because opinion that said it, ICS. There was an opinion that said even Reishim. But the first opinion said that you have to. Um, let's see, Rabbi Yehuda's opinion is that it has to be a, something meaningful. But, but as we initially learned this, two olives would have been meaningful if they matched up two of the karashim. Right. right. Two, you know, check marks would have been meaningful if they matched up two of the karashim. Right. So maybe it has to do with his intention that he's intending to write a word, a full word, and he stops in the middle. And we're saying that this is considered his machshava. This is considered his machshava. Oh, if, I see. If You're saying so it's whether it's a, a khashava no, act. Right. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you. Right. By the way, Rabbi Yehuda before that said two Alephs, that was only in the name of his teacher. He himself holds that it needs to be two different letters. That's what we said. And it needs to be, have, be, have meaning as well, according to him. Okay, so we're saying it needs to be Ksivatama. We're talking about possible mistakes that someone could make. The, this one is a Gimel Kempi at Tzadik. Now, the top of the Tzadik has a similarity at Tzadik Sophis, a longer Tzadik, um, has a similarity to the bottom of the Gimel. So that could be a possibility there if you do it upside down. Dalsin, Ration, Ration, Dalsin. Well, a Dalsin and Ration is very similar. You have to make sure that you don't make them, uh, that it's not confusing. This also has to do with the corner. A Dalsin needs a corner, but it also sticks back. Yeah, it's very interesting when you go through um, after, at the end in the Mishnah Bura, after Lamed Vav, you have something there called Mishnah Sasefrim. And over there he describes what's the key point to the letter that makes it different than a Chaf and a Bez and a Dalit and a Resh. He'll, he surprises you sometimes, but you think it's the piece that's sticking back. Really, it's the corner that it's, it comes to a point instead of the very interesting things. Hey and chesen, chesen hey and you can't make a, a ches look like a hey or a hey look like a ches. That's because they attach. Clear from this, it's a raya that a ches doesn't is not two zayans, more of a svardik ches. That's what it seems from this, because I'm only concerned about that that one point. But we'll see later that that's not that we have rayas differently. Vavin yudin yudin vavin, very common issue. The yud is a little bit too long. Could look like a vav, or a vav is too short, and you have to tell uh, maybe from context. You have to ask a child to read it. Zayin nun and nun zayin. This is a long and nun. Looks similar to a zayin. <clears throat> uh, if you don't make the nun long enough, it's going to be a zayin. Tesson payin payfin payfin tesson. Both of them have um, something bent into the letter. The test has bent in on this side, the pay has bent in over there. Um, I guess if you turn the test sideways, it has a similarity to a pay. Kfufen, pshutin, pshutin, kfufen, to make sure that letters <coughs> that are long, that you don't bend them. A chaf, a langa chaf, an end chaf, um, is really just, the bottom of the chaf is just bent down. So you have to make sure that you bend it if you're making a regular chaf. And the same, the opposite. Um, memin, samchen, samchen memin. You have to make sure your samachs aren't mems. Could be an easy mistake. One is roundish, one is square. Stumen, psuchen, psuchen, stumen. And this is what we were looking for that a closed letter, like a, a final mem, should not be opened. And an open one should not be closed. 
So this is a, what did you telling me before that you have a raya? That if you write shame, Mishimin, if you write shame, then it doesn't need to be a closed letter, even though it's the end of the word. Here we see that if you write it differently, an open letter, then it's going to be puzzle. Parshap Why are you comparing uh, writing a Sefer Torah to yeah, just writing question. in general? That's a good question. That's a good question. That's a very good question. Obviously, writing on Shabbos doesn't need to be a uh, cipher writing. Anyone writes a letter, even in script. Does Chaim Druin ask a bad question? I mean, has he ever done that? Well, that's a good question. And I, I have to look into that, why, why this is being compared. This is clearly only in Tefillin and Mezuzah. Let's have to. Okay. That's a good question. So we say, um, now, Parsha Psucha Le'asin Astuma, Astuma Le'asin Psucha. The way this works is that in the Torah, um, it could start at the beginning of the line or it can start in the middle of the line. Um, there's a whole discussion about the last Parsha of Tefillin. Um, but if you start it in the wrong place, a Psucha means that it's going to start at the beginning of the line. It's Machlech is the Rambam in the rush, but basically it starts at the beginning of the line because the last paragraph uh, left an open space all the way to the end of the line, So, the, which means the next one needs to start at the beginning. Stuma means that there's like a window in between in the line, so you can start at the end of the line, and the last paragraph will, will, will end here. The next one will, will start there on the same line. It, it, it creates a window in, in the middle of the, a gap on the line, and you just start a new paragraph at towards the end of the line. You're not allowed to it, switch it. If it's a psucha, it has to be a psucha. If it's a stuma, it has to be a, a stuma. How do we know the Rambam goes through the whole uh, Torah based on a, um, a Sefer Torah that was made by someone, Ben Asher, that he got a hold of? Okay. Um... Kasva Kashira, Isha Kasav Esashira Kiyetsuba. If you wrote the Torah like the song is written, if you have a look at Oz Yasher or Hazino, which is written a little different, but that's written like it looks like a poem. It's written like a Shira is where you have um, a word here, a word here, and on top is a word in the center, and then it works its way down like a pattern, like that. So you have to write only the shira like that. You can't write, shira means the song. You can't write the rest of the Torah like that. In the, the song of the Torah, you have to write like the song. You can't write it like the rest of the Torah, just in the block. Maybe if you didn't write with ink, use something else. You wrote God's names. Askaras means mentioning God's names. In gold, that doesn't mean specifically God's name. It could be anything. But that would be an example. Someone would say, oh, God's name, I'm going to write it in gold. Areli Yigonzu. These you have to put into Seamus to bury them or uh, hide them away. So we finished that question. And the question is, why are you saying that you can write Shin Mem with an open Mem if it's the end of the word? My answer is, yeah. Although you don't, the, the it, reason I put the Septuagint the was because it was written in gold. Oh, uh, I didn't that's, know that. Yeah, that's where he was in the kosher Torah, and they didn't worry, worried about the Greeks or whatever Ptolemy was uh, messing it up. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. So it was written in gold. Gold letters. Uh huh. It, it's impossible that we have the original Septuagint. We, we have copies of. We can't have Talmud, the, the seven. No, this this right. is just a picture that I found. No, that's though. an old one. Okay. <laughs> okay, because that library was burnt, uh, Alexander. Okay, Huda Amar Ki Aitana, we are given the answer, that there is another opinion here, and it goes like this. Very interesting how this works. The Tanya, Rabbi Yudah ben Basir Rabbi Yudah ben Basir says, this is talking about Nisach HaMayim. 
on Sukkot we pour water. You're familiar with this from the Simchas Beis Sheva. We pour water on the altar during the morning uh, sacrifice. Now, how do we know that we're supposed to do that? We learn it from extra letters in the Torah. And those letters spell out the word Mayim. Now, the interesting thing is one of those letters, or both of those letters, are end mems. That means we're spelling out the word Mayim with an end mem. You see, you can use an end mem for the beginning of the word, which is not exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for a open mem at the end of the word. But we're going to do it this way, and we'll say, you see, if you can do it that way, you can do it the other way as well. Okay, it goes like this. Nemar b'sheni, you know, from the seven days of Sukkot, the second day it says in the, in the sacrifices that are offered, b'neskehem, it concludes with b'neskehem, with that mem. B'shishi unsacheha has an extra word, an extra yud there. B'shvi kemishpatam, it has an extra mem. It spells out the mem, the yud and the mem. Spell out mayim, hare mem yud mem, mayim. Okay, that means uh, that tells us that in Sukkot you pour the the water. We can remes on the That's an allusion to this. Now, mida pasuach vasus sasum. Since it's supposed to be an open mem to spell mayim, and you wrote it as a end mem, it's kosher. So that probably the other way also. Sasum nami sasum vasu pasuach. If it's supposed to be a closed mem, but you wrote an open mem, you're supposed to write shame with an end mem and you wrote shame with an open mem, it should be kasha. So that's our answer. We're going like Rabbi the Ben Beseda, where it says, me dummy, can you compare an open mem that's supposed to be closed to a closed mem that's supposed to be open? A closed mem that's supposed to be open is much better. But if you'd make it open when it's supposed to be closed, that's a problem. Me dummy, pasuach vasasasam, if it's supposed to be open, but you made it closed, a closed letter is much better. You, you increased it. You did a better letter, like a calligraphy. You made it even nicer. Because Rav Chizda says, Okay, now listen to this. The Gemara here is assuming that um, the, 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 the difference of it's called Mansapach, these five letters, Menatzpach. Um, mem, Nun, Tzadik, Pe, and Chaf. Menatzpach. Uh, these five letters, you, you write them differently at the end of the word than you do in the middle of the word. The Gemara here understands that these letters were introduced later on in history. Originally, it was written one way, and later on, we introduced a new way to differentiate between the beginning of the word and the end of the word, middle of the word and end of the word. What was the original letters? Was it originally closed, the final letter? All the letters were final. Or was it originally all open? Now, when you learn the Gemara Megillah, where it's, this is uh, there at the beginning of Megillah, you assume that it was originally all open, and they introduced the final ones. When you learn our Gemara here, the Gemara is suggesting that it was originally all closed. How do we know that? Because it says, Mem the Samach Shabaluches Penesayayindu, the Mem, all the Mems in the, in the Luches and the Samach. You see, when you, when you chisel out a letter, um, you chisel out the Mem, so you have the, the out part, and then there's a center to the Mem if it's engraved. So if there's no, if there's a back, then that center would be sticking out of the back. But because, as we're gonna see, the luchas were chiseled all the way through. So how did that middle part stay there? Today you can somehow get it with magnets, uh, possibly to get it to hang around up there. But there was sapphire, so there was, it was a miracle. Okay, so that means that the mem is the, is the letter that was used in the luchas, the final mem. So if you had uh, a, a, an open mem, that instead of writing it properly open, you wrote it as a final mem, that's an improvement. See, because in the Luchas, you had this miracle with them. However, sasam also pasuach. But if you have a final mem and you make it open, like you're supposed to write shame with the final mem and you left it open, gruika megarle, that's a, a, uh, not an improvement, it's the opposite. 
you lowered it down. We're going to prove what we're saying. Those letters, Mem, Nun, Tzadik, Pei, and Chaf, that came later. We're assuming that came later, the, the regular letters, the regular font came later. Came later. Rashi over here points out the contradiction between our Gemara and the Gemara and the Megillah. The Gemara says, for Tisbara, is it possible that the letters were introduced later? This is a, the Gemara is challenging the historical um, aspect of this. But we have a verse that says, Eila mitzvahs, these are the laws, and we learn from that. We don't have anything new. We have no new, new, uh, new laws. Everything we got from, from Sinai. So we had to have all the letters then. It definitely the letters were there. We didn't know where it was in the, which one was used in the middle of the word and which one was used at the end of the word. So the, the, I guess at the beginning it was interchangeable and the, 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 the or the prophets. Are the, you uh, from here that basically there were no open mems in the Luchos? I mean, they, they existed. That's what it sounds like. It existed in concept, but in the Luchos, they didn't appear, according right. to what's going on here. Yeah, I wanted to, I didn't have a chance this morning. I wanted to, to go through the Asersa Dibris and to see if there were open mems or, uh, um, or only closed mems. It could be, I, I mean, I, I, I just, yeah, I just have to look through the scroll, <laughs> look through the, oh, the text. No, no, no sure it has. But whatever the case is, the Gemara is making it look like all the Mems were, were holding it with a miracle. And so that means that they were writing it. Um, the, rich, the original letters were all Mems, were, were final Mems. The original Mem was the final Mem. And the Gemara says, but how could we introduce anything? Uh, we're not allowed to introduce anything into the, into the tradition, into the laws. We're introducing a new type of letter. So we said... That no, the letter was always there. We just didn't know which went in the middle, which went in the, which went in the end. You know, this would be like um, there's different ways of writing a, a, a an aleph. Let's say you write it more roundish. You make it like a K. Some people make it like a K. There's different ways. It's so, okay. You have options. You can make it like this. You can make it like that. And then came then it came along and they instituted that this goes in the middle of a word. That goes at the end of a word. Bakati, but nevertheless, there was an institution here that wasn't uh, originally Eila uh, Mitzvah. She never Shaila Chadish Tavar Miata. You can't change anything. The Shachachum Bachazar Viyastim. It was originally set up like that. It was forgotten. It was like misused, and then they established how it's supposed to be. Okay. Now, I'm not sure if the Gemara answered the question by saying that Mia Havi, Havi, made the Lay Havi Yod and Haibem Tateva Teva, that it was actually there. I'm not sure if that's an, if the Gemara is answering the question, that really it was originally there as well, both Mems, and therefore it doesn't matter if it's this way or that way, if you switch it uh, one according to Rabbi Ben Basera. Could be that's the Gemara's answer. Could be the Gemara's just leaving it unanswered. Because the miracle of the Luchas makes it a better letter. I'm not sure. I'm sure Rashi doesn't allude to it. At least I don't see it in the Rashi if this, if this got answered. Gufa. We learned before, Amar of Chizda, Mem the Samach Shabaluchas Penisa Yaimdim. The Mem and the Samach and the Luchas were there in a, with a miracle. The, the center of it, the letter was standing with the miracle. Rav Chizda, if with, together with this next point, you'll see why it's such a miracle. Because you could read straight through the, um, the words. Now, Kagoy, Nevuv would be Buvan. Rahav, Bahar, and Saro is Veres. These words are not in the Luchas. All it's telling me is that I could, if I looked at one end, I would see the word Nevuv, and if I looked on the other side, I would see the word Buvan. 
Now, when I was a kid, they told me that I could see from both sides, I could read it properly. Uh, there's something with the, uh, this is, I'm giving a muscle now. There's something with Zoom that they gave me an option with the video. I can do a mirror video or I can do a regular video. And the difference is when I lift my right hand, if my, I'm lifting my, if it would come up on this side or if it come up on this. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just very confusing when you look in the mirror and you hold up your right hand and you're trying to figure out like something's wrong in that picture. <laughs> so, so um, uh, I, they told me that in the Lucha, it says, they said that, um, at least in school, they said, I could read Anoichi Hashem Alekecha from the other side perfectly. From Rav that's not, that's not exactly what happened. Rav is saying that, that you could see the letters through, but it would actually be backwards. And the whole miracle was the Mem Samach, Not the miracle that it would, you could see, you could read Anoichi from the other side. Miracle is the Mem, what, so why do you have to tell me that, you could, that Nevuv would be Vuvan? Well, that's because it's just telling me that it was through and through. That's the way Rashi puts it. Okay. I, I, I should point out that Yushalmi has a different story to this miracle. Yushalmi takes it that the, the, the script of the Luchas was that Paleo, Hebrew, or whatever, um, and the letters were different. And uh, the Yushalmi says, Ayin Shebeluchis Bnei Sayayin. If you look at those old scripts, um, I'm expecting Dr. Stein to put up a chart. Uh, the old script, there's a, uh, the, the letters are different. Actually, if I remember correctly, the Samach was an X in the old script or something. It wasn't a, it wasn't a circle. Uh, but the Ayin is the circle. And Yushalmi says, Amar Ablevi Barbun, if I remember correctly, he says, "Ayin uh, shebeluches bnei sayin." But in the old script, there's a, a difference of what script was was in the luches. Very interesting. The Gemara Sanhedrin, I believe, discusses what the original script was. If this is confusing, uh, how could it be? The letters, Kabbalah, and all of this, Shablevi Yitzchak, uh, the Kedusha Slevi, says that originally the world wasn't a receptacle for the iris, and even the letters weren't a perfect. Uh, you know, because of the split between spiritual and and, uh, and physical. Um, but through time, we were able to get it. Ah, there you go. And now our letters are more a perfect fit for the iris that come into the letters. And that's why it was adjusted. And was in time, you see there's a progression. Matan Taira, there was a break. And then and the letters uh, now are more matim for the, for the iris. Let me just take a look over there. Ayin, you see the ayin is the samach, is the ayin is the circle. And the samach, some other letter, I don't know, it looks like a Chinese chart. It looks like a, and where's, is there a mem? I can't see, there's no final mem, so it doesn't matter. Okay, let's go further. Amri Lei Rabbanan the Rabbi Shua ben Levi. Now, Rabbi Shua ben Levi was a master of Agadita, the Gemara tells us, he was a master of Gemara, Baba Kama tells us. The, the rabbis, the yeshiva student said to Rabbi Shobin Levi, this child came in to the Beis Medrash. He's saying things that even in the days of Yeshua ben Nun, there was nothing that was said like this. Unbelievable stuff. It sounds like the Yenuka of the Zaya, you know, like we're hearing these amazing things we have to study. Okay, get ready. <laughs> The, this Gemara you're going to find um, that it's quoted in Chassidus all over the place, and you just didn't realize that it's uh, it's actually a Gemara. It's going to give you a background for a lot of interesting things. We're going to discuss the letters. Aleph Beis means Aleph Bina. The word Aleph means to learn. Aleph Chachachma. I will teach you wisdom. Aleph Chabina. I will teach you understanding. So here, Aleph Beis means. Learn, understanding. Gimel Dalas, that's Gimel means to bestow, to, to give over, to be gracious. Gimel Dalim, 
Dalit support is a, a pauper. So be gracious to the to the poor. My time apshuta kari the gimel lagabi dalit. If you look at the leg of the gimel, it's sticking outward, uh, sticking forward. What's it doing over there? It's like actually bent upwards a drop. The 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 the, um, the left leg of the gimel is not flat down. It's like it's like a tilted shoe, you know, like a why? The way of a gemel chasadim is to run after the poor. The Gemara in Sukkah tells us the difference between tzedakah and gemilas chasadim. Tzedakah is someone that gives money. Gemilas chasadim is it doesn't tzedakah doesn't have to be money. It could be anything, but it's the giving of it. The gemilas chasadim is the effort that goes into the giving. When you bake bread and you give that bread to the poor. The tzedakah was the giving of it. The gemil chasadim was the baking of the bread. And then the Gemara tells us that the gemil chasadim is, is better than all the tzedakah. <laughs> the effort that goes into giving the tzedakah. Okay, so the, the gemil chasadim, he runs after the poor to give it to the poor. My time, apshutakari, the dal's the gabi gemil. Why is the leg of the dalad bent slightly backwards? The, ba- the, 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 the dalad only has one leg, but it's, it's tilted backwards. The lim tilei the, the, the dal, the poor person, hangs around the, the, the gracious person, the generous person, uh, to make, it, make himself available in case he's going to be given something. So he goes back a little bit to, just to hang around, just in case there's some giving out something. My time in the api the dal is gimel. Why doesn't the dal face the gimel? No, I don't think any of our letters face that way, but... It's nevertheless, there's something we can learn from it. Why doesn't the Dalit face the Gimel? Deletingly, but sinner should be given in private. Shouldn't be ashamed. Very important. Hey, Vav, we're continuing the letters. Zashmei Shalak Kadosh Baruch Hu. Zayin Ches Tes Yod Kaf Lamed Bimata Isakain Hakadosh Baruch If you'll do this, I guess you study with understanding. Gemal uh, Dalim, you do uh, with the name of Hashem. I guess that means that it's you do it Lishma. Um, then Hashem Zanaischa, that's the Zion. Hashem will sustain you. The Chinaischa will give you grace, charm, which is very important. Umeitivlach, that's the test. It'll be good to you. Benaitzmacha Yerusha will give you inheritance. Bekoishla Kesher Leilama Kesher Leilama Ba. He'll tie for you a crown in the world to come. Mem sucha, mem stuma. Only the text doesn't have the first letter of the, oh, I mean, meti from the word type, probably. Yeah, type. Yeah. yeah. Mem sucha, mem stuma. The open mem and the closed mem. Maimer pesuch, maimer sasum. This is quoted sometimes. There's a, um, things that we're allowed to learn and we're, things that we're not allowed to, to, to learn, or not allowed to teach, rather. That's uh, like Maisa Merkava. There's things that are uh, secrets and that can't re- can't be taught. And the what happened uh, to the Ka- Chaf, Chaf Seifes? Oh, he didn't tell us about that. He just said, Kaisa Lecha Kaser. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, maybe because the shape isn't... Uh... Oh, actually, later on, it's going to explain that. There's going to be an explanation for that. Nun kvufa nun pshuta. You see, there has to be, right? That's by the nun, it does. Um, a bent nun and a, and a straight nun. Nun kafaf. Uh, I'm sorry. Neman kafaf, neman pashat. There's a trustworthy that's humble. And that trustworthy person that's humble, at the end, he'll be pashat. He'll be able to stand up and get his reward. Um, others... Learn, others learn this. I'm not sure if it was from Yushalmi or other Mepharshim. They say Neman Kafaf is Moshe and the Neman Pashat is the Ebishter. Uh, something like that. There was another explanation here, I don't remember. Samach Ayin, Smaich Aniyim, support the poor. Lishna Achrina, Simana Masabatayru Kneyesa, if you make mnemonics, you should be able to remember. Pei Kfufa Pei Pshuta, a bent pay and a straight pay. This means at certain times you should open your mouth to, to, to speak Torah and certain times you should close it. 
it has to do with if there's someone else there that should be speaking, then you should be quiet and let the uh, let the sage speak. And um, and then sometimes no, you're uh, there's no one there. You have to. The, it's Rashi quotes a Gemara. B'shas hamekans im pazer. It's the end of the Gemara brachas. That um, when everyone is gathered inside, you should go and, and teach Torah. Tzadik kufu for tzadik pshuta, a bent tzadi and a straight tzadi. Tzadik kaf of tzadik pashat, humble. And the pashat, I guess, means that he receives his reward. Gemara says, one second, you just said that already. Hainu neman kaf of neman pashat. You already said that a trustworthy person is when he's humble, and then he receives his reward. Well, haisef lacha kasef kfif al kfif al. So you have to have an extra bit of humility over there, an extra bent o- bent over. This tells us that the Torah was given with an extra amount of awe to increase the humility, the, the uh, submission. Kuf is Kaddish. All of these, the whole Aleph base is, is, uh, is uh, teaching. By the way, the, the, in, in Tehillim, when you have uh, a chapter that's according to the Aleph base, the Mepharshim learn it that it's in the, in the order of the Aleph base because it's, te- it's a teaching chapter. That's the, uh, it has lessons in it. So here also the Aleph base is the lessons. Kuf is Kadesh, Resh is Russia. So don't be a Russia. My time in Mahada Api the Kuf Miresh. Why is the Kuf, um, it really wants to say, why is the Resh not facing the Kuf? Kuf is, is why doesn't the Resh turn back? So, Amar Kaddish Baruch, Inani Yochel Istakob Rasha. Hashem says, the Kuf, which is the Kaddish, says, I can't look at, uh, at, the, at the wicked. My time, I'm had a tagi the Kuf, the Gabi Resh. Well, at the end of a Kuf is a little tag, a little crown. And it's uh, going up towards, you could put the crowns, you sometimes go on different sides. Um, well, I'm not sure about that. You never really have on the back. But could have, we could have had. Why did you put it at the front next to the Reish? That if the wicked, if the Reish will turn around and do tshuva, I'll tie a crown for him just like myself. My time I carry the kuf to you. Why is the leg of the kuf not attached to the top? The other bay, Lyle. So if the Russia decides to turn around, it should be easy for him to come back. He should be able to enter through that top uh, thing. Let him go down and go through the underneath and he'll come around. Or you have to make it so easy. This is a support for Rish Lakish. What's the meaning of the Pasuk? To the scoffers, he, he lets them uh, scoff. And to the uh, humble, he gives grace. When it comes to doing Avera, to make, for a person to make himself impure, mm-hmm. so permission is granted. The door is open. But when it comes to com- becoming pure, it's not just that the door is open, but Messiah, I say, you give him some support you give him you you help him so therefore you make it much more comfortable so the it's open the kuf is open on the top shin is sheker tough is emes the Gemara asks here and this you may be familiar with in uh in some famous maimarim it's my time is sheker makarvan mili emes merach kamili why is sheker all the letters of sheker are one after another kuf shin and MS is, Aleph is the beginning of the alphabet, Tuf is the end, and Mem is the middle. Why is it spread out like that? It says, Shikra Shchiyach. Falsehood is more common. Kush to Shchiyach, but truth is not. Look in the news. <laughs> okay, my time is Shikra, Achda Kar, Achada Kari Koi, the MS Malabin Levune. Why is it that Sheker has one leg? All of the things have one leg. It's standing on one leg. The resh is on one leg. The kuf 
There's one leg, I guess the leg sticking down. In the shin, it, I guess it depends how you write a shin. But the Gemara answers, but MS is all supported. It's built up like bricks. The Aleph has two feet. The Mem has a flat bottom. The Tuf has two feet. It's more, it's more stable. So it says, Kushta Koi Shikrile Koi, because the truth is more stable. It's going to endure, and the falsehood won't. Okay, now we go through some other ways of combining letters and, uh, tr um, and uh, exchanging letters. One of the ways is called atbash, that an aleph equals a tough and a bayez equals a shin. Ah, very good. Atbash, if you look at Dr. Stein's chart, you can see it. Aleph tough, bayez shin, gimel resh, dalid, kuf, it's not lined up perfectly. But anyway, that's there. Uh, we use it actually, and the, the tour uses it. Elchus Pesach, I think. It tells us that the first day of Pesach is going to be the same day as Tisha B'Av. What, what day was Pesach this year? I don't remember. The first day, the first day of Pesach. I don't remember. Was it a three-day Yom Tov? Anyway, uh, whatever it is, the Aleph equals the Tav. The second day of Pesach is the same day as Shavuos. The, the third day is the same day as Rosh Hashanah, whatever. So anyway, it, they, 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 the Aleph equal symbolizes the Tav. So Atbash, we start off with Oisi Tav, Asavalai. Me, they uh, disgraced. I'm going to desire him. This, we're going to have some negative uh, things here, and then we'll return positive. Base shin, this is the bash. Be like chashak, shmi yachal alav. In me, they didn't uh, desire. I'm going to put my shechina, my name on him. Gar, gimel resh. Gar means... Um, so I'm not sure. The Steinzelt said that it means something uh, negative, like... like um, uh, um, lewd, lewdness or something. So Gufay Time, the Gimel is, he, he makes his body impure. Arachim alav, the Rashi I should have compassion on him. Dalit Kuf, Dal Sinal, he closes my doors. Karnav Layagadeya, the Kuf, I shouldn't cut off his horns. Adkan Midas Rishayim, that's as far as the Rishayim go. Of Midas Sadikim, it goes differently. At bash, imat abayish. If you are ashamed, so gar dak imat aisekain gar bedayk. You will dwell. In bedayk means like attached to the heavens. Tachas nafshat teitzura tachas kisi bedayk bash bedayk shemayim. Maybe bedayk means shemayim. Maybe Rashi means bedayk means shemayim. I'm not sure if that's what he means. Hey Tzadik, Vav Pei. We're continuing with this exchange of letters. The Hey is becomes a, a Ches in this instance. So it's Chatzitza, Havi Ben Chalaf. There'll be a separation between you and Vav Pei is, I guess, Havi uh, and the Af. Af is the Pei of, of anger. There'll be a separation between you and anger. Zayin, Ayin, Ches, Samech, Tes, Nun. So, Veinatam is the Mizdazeya Mina Satan. I'm not sure where the Ches and Samach go in. Maybe it just means Chas. You won't be concerned. Um, you won't tremble from the, uh, you won't have a concern from, the, from Satan. Yud Mem Kof Lamed. Omar Sar Shel Gehenim Lefnei Kadash Baruch Hu. Can it not be the Samach is the Shin Satan? Oh, yeah, that's good. And then uh, in the Ches would be, I'm not sure. That's good. Very good. At least we got another letter in. <laughs> okay, so the Sar, this is Yud Mem Kof Lamed. The Sar Shal Ganem says in front of Hashem, Rabbeinu Shalolam, Liam Kol, 
send everyone into the to the sea, which is referring to Gehenim. Put everyone in to Gehenim. Send them all in. Amar Kadosh Baruch Hu, so Hashem responds. Here's another sort of um, way of dividing letters. It's Aleph exchanges for a Ches and the Samach. I, I think it's like, I guess, every eight, seven letters, you, you, you start again. So Aleph the Ches. Yeah, there you go. Aleph the Ches, Beis, Tes, Ayin, Gimel, Yud, Fei. Very good, Dr. Stein. Yeah, so it goes like this. This is the response. Ani chas aleim. I have compassion on them. Neshabatu begif, because they kicked. The bottom means they rejected. Gif, which is adultery. The targum of leisinaf is leisagof. They rejected adultery. Now we do dalid chaf tzadik. Dakim heim, kenim heim, tzadikim heim. They're righteous, they're, they're appropriate. What is the, da, uh, dach? It means they're, um, they're lowly, I guess. Um, and they're humble, probably. Hey, lamit kuf. Again, we're going to have to switch this. Ein lach, ein lach chelak. Oh, they have the full word. The hey is the ches. You have no portion by him. You have no, he's, God is telling the satan. It's none, this is the Jewish people. You don't have any rights to them. Okay, now we do the, last, the end of the alphabet. In this combination, it's vav, mem, resh, zayin, nun, shin. And then tough is an extra letter because it doesn't, uh, 22 letters and it's uh, seven uh, times three is 21. So you have an extra letter there. Okay, Amr Gehenim Lefanov. Gehenim says, Rabbi Nishalaylam. Master of the world, Mari, my master. Zanini Mizar Shalshais. Make me uh, sustain um, from the descendants of Shais. Send them in to, to, the, to Gehenim. Amalei. So Hashem responds with another combination of letters. Aleph exchanges for Lamed. Al Bam. Aleph is a Lamed, a base is a Mem. Yeah, these things Rashi says, you look and say for Yitzira, you'll find all of these combinations. Kimmel is nun, dalet is samach. So he says, lehechan elichem. That's the Aleph Lamed. Where should I put him? Where am I going to lead him to? Ligan, that's the Gimel nun. Hadas, that's the dalet and the samach. I'm going to to a, a garden of myrtle. Hey, I and Vav, pay. Amar Gehenim lefnei HaKadosh Baruch Hu Benesh Lelem, ayof anaychi. So that means like I'm uh, uh, fatigue. I'm, uh, I need more. Uh, you have to send me more people. I'm hungry. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, tired and hungry. So Zayin Tzadik Ches Kuf. Halolo Zarei Shel Yitzchak. Tzadik and Ches and the Kuf. Dear descendants of Yitzchak. Tough re- Tess Reish Yud Shin Kuf. Tough. Tess Reish. Tar Yeshli. What is the tar? Who is it? Tess and Reish. Wait. Tar means to wait. Wait. Yeshli kitas kitas shalev de kacham shani nisan lach. I have uh, groups of uh, of idolaters that I'll give you. He tells to the satan. Okay, let's start the mishnah. Maybe we'll get. Case of shtei yisius be'elam echad chayev. Someone writes two letters and one forgetting. We're on the top of kuf dalad amid beis. 104b. Someone writes two letters and one forgetting is Chayev. On Shabbos. Kosev B'diyoy, if he writes with ink, Besam is, let me get the letters here, the uh, translations. It doesn't, it doesn't help me. Sam is with another type of common uh, ingredients for ink. Sikra is usually a, a red ink. Bakumas is with a type of gum. Um, it's a tree sap. 
uh, Bekankan time. This is copper sulfate. And in Bechol and anything that will make a, a leave a mark. Okay, let's say, Al Shnei Kaisele is obvious. If he writes on two corners, two walls, and they're one next to each other. Al Shnei Luchei Pinkas. Or if he writes on two columns of his ledger, but they're right next to each other. They negim zemze, and they're neg this means that they're right one opposite the other, then he's chayev. We're going to see what happens if he writes on in a scroll, one at the beginning, one at the end. It could be different. Case of al-Basari, if he writes on his flesh, it's chayev. Kids did this in school. It's chayev. Before the test, they write all the answers on their hands. <laughs> Let me check your pockets. I don't have anything. Okay, Hamasarat al Basari, if he scratches letters onto his flesh. Rabbalasim Machayev, Chatas Chum Paitrim. Chum say that he's Pater. Rabbalasim says that he's Chayev. We'll see. Very interesting Gemara on that. Kasa Bemashkin, if he writes with liquid, Bame Paris, Babak Drachim, with dust. This is, you can write it, but it does, it's not going to last. You know, you, you just, you, you, do, you see sometimes on the side of the street, you say, uh, get your car pressure washed or something, and they write it on some uh, very dusty uh, area, and they say, call something. They show you that they can clean. So, Baba Kasefrim, I guess the, the dust that comes from the ink, Anything that's not going to last. All of these is putter. Magic ink. If he writes like this, he, instead of writing like this, he puts the pencil this way and he has to write like um, his hand upside down. With his foot, he puts a pencil between his toes. The fear all, very, all of these are basically. Yeah. He does with his mouth, the marpikai. Marpikai we had before is either his elbow or his armpit. Kasav, Isacha Samach Laksav. If he writes one letter next to a letter that was already written. So, Kasav al Gabi Ksav. If he uses the uh, letters that were already there and he just stencil. writes o over them. What's a, sten a stencil, right? Um, he wants to write a ches, but he ends up not attaching them and he just has two zions. This looks like that that's, this is the way to make the ches, where you have two zions and you put a, a, a little hump in the middle. You write a letter on the ground and one on the roof. You put on two opposite walls, one letter here, one letter there. And two... Uh, pages of the ledger. So, and you can't, they're not one next to each other, so you can't read them together. Over there is Pater. Let's say he writes a letter, but then he puts an apostrophe after it. So, that letter symbolizes a whole word. So, Rabbi Shur ben Beseira Mechaev and Vechacham and Paitra. Come say that he's Pater. Okay, let's, 